Hello, hello! Welcome to another episode of History in the Dark. I am your host, Darkness the Curse. And before we begin, as always, thank you so much to my generous patrons, my British Rail Critics, and of course, my underwater train finders. You are the reason why this content remains! Blub, 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 blub. We're drowning. And today, we're going to be discussing more underwater trains. Because, you know, y'all thought that I ran out of these or something. No, 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 no. There's there's actually a a, a plenty of, of these uh, particular locomotives that have wound up underwater. It, it was just I decided to space it out a bit more because there's other things to talk about when it comes to locomotive history and railroad history and history in general because we do all kinds over here. But... Don't think I've forgotten. My underwater train finders need something to look for. And today we're going to talk about the locomotive of the Bon Terra Mine. And we're going to be knocking another state off the list. Missouri! Say hi to Missouri, everybody. Welcome, welcome to the Underwater Train Club. And Missouri got a bit extra when it came to the underwater trains. Because... Their locomotive, it is a locomotive, not a whole train, that is trapped underwater, is actually pretty well known on the basis of everyone knows it's there. It's just, um, well, there aren't that many details regarding it specifically, because frankly, it was just kind of an industrial locomotive. It wasn't anything special. But when we're talking about underwater mines, that usually is a red flag, because, um, okay, look, I've been over this before. Do not go into abandoned mines, ever. Don't do it. Don't actually do that because you will die horribly it's incredibly dangerous to go into these old spaces that were once used to mine materials out of the ground because mines are abandoned for all sorts of reasons whether it be instability or flooding or what have you but over time the earth tends to want to take that space back and it's very easy to fall into a pit and never be heard from again or drown horribly. But in Missouri's case, they were like, mm, how about a tourist attraction instead? Yeah, seriously. The Bon Terra Mine was a lead mine, and it was also known as the St. Joseph Lead Mine at Bon Terra. It's located in, well, Bon Terra, St. Francis County, Missouri. It was built in 1864 by St. Joe Lead Company, and was located below the city. It lasted nearly a hundred years, it was finally closed in 1962, and it was added to the National Register of Historic Places in 1974. The mine seems to have been abandoned mostly because there just wasn't anything left to mine. It was tapped out, so there wasn't any purpose behind operating it anymore. Left to its own devices, nature began taking it back, and it began to fill it with rain as well as spring water. And it's often called the largest man-made cavern in the world, though that's a bit debatable. In 1983, Jacques Cousteau's Calypso crew actually explored the mine for a documentary. See, it was discovered that the waters in the mine are actually crystal clear. It's a very, very gorgeous place, and it's known to be rather stable. So, as a result, the mine has since become a historic tourist attraction that hosts walking tours as well as diving tours where people can go down and, yes, dive into the mine, all with tour guides for safety purposes. It's not so dissimilar from natural cave walks that some of you may have gone on, except this is a man-made mine, and normally you wouldn't want to go down in a man-made mine, but due to the fact that it's been well-maintained over the years, and safety is, of course, paramount, this may be one of the few mines you can actually go down in for a small fee. It's definitely interesting and probably worth checking out. But you're here for that locomotive. You don't care about the mine itself. What about the train? The choo-choo? Where is it? Well, she's down in the mine under the water. I think you already knew that. And she is a tiny little thing. Seemingly an American wheel arrangement, but a very, very small American wheel arrangement. She's clearly an industrial steam locomotive that was designed to go in and out of the mine carrying the materials that the miners brought out. When the mine was abandoned, so was she, and she was left down there, and as the waters filled in, well, she was left underneath them. And that's where she sits now. 
Outside of undoubtedly being owned and operated by the mine, there actually isn't that much information I could pull up about this particular locomotive. Most information is about the mine itself, not this specific engine. It's just known that she was left there when the mine closed, so naturally it can be assumed that they were using her prior to the closure. As far as her condition goes, well, she's not in that bad a shape, all things considered. Again, the mine is a very unique place. Despite being underwater, it's fresh water for one, and in the mine's case, because the water is very still, with very little erosion, the stuff left that was underneath is actually in relatively pristine condition, all things considered. Yeah, it's a bit rusty, but not as bad as it would be in pretty much any other environment. It's one of the big draws of diving in the mine in that you're effectively diving into history, seeing how things were left in this mine when they closed, and how they operated. As far as recovery is concerned, that's not going to happen. I just want to stress that there's no way that this locomotive will ever be taken from where she rests. Because she's part of a tourist attraction now. Occasionally you get this where a locomotive that was abandoned almost becomes kind of a landmark, and saving them doesn't become a consideration at all, because they're kind of one with the history of the location where they're sitting. It's especially clear when it comes to this one, because she is a part of this tourist location. A big draw is seeing this locomotive. She's one of the key spots on the diving tours. So the idea of pulling her out would kind of devalue the tour overall. Not in a massive way, but massive enough that the operators in the mine these days would be against the idea, because she's a part of the mine's history. And their whole shtick is showing the mine's history. In a weird way, she's kind of already a part of a museum. Just not a museum in the way we typically think of them. Plus, I mean, I've been over this before, but these underwater locomotives, the idea of them ever running again is hideously unlikely to the point that it's almost absurd. She'd almost certainly wound up on static display, maybe, maybe dolled up for a sort of visual restoration, but that's it. But given how niche the mine is, and how small and localized, the notion of this locomotive being that big a draw for a regular museum is also pretty unlikely. These industrial engines are usually pretty unnotable, historically speaking. In fact, her being here, in this already tourist trap mine, is literally the best place she could possibly be. You could argue that she's one of the least forgotten underwater locomotives because, well, anyone who's familiar with the mine knows she's there. She's still looked at, she's still appreciated, she still has what a lot of heritage locomotives that are preserved in museums have. Not in the same way, but she does. So for once, I would argue that it would almost be better just to leave her where she is. And I rest on the notion that she's already in a place where she can be appreciated. It's not like that the others, where I'm usually playing devil's advocate and pointing out all the cost elements in terms of raising one of these. I mean, yeah, it would be really expensive to get this locomotive out of there, because she's in a mine, down, underneath the ground, and underwater. She has both problems, but it's not like she's lost in a sense, because they know where she's at. And people see her every weekend. Which is honestly a better fate than most of these underwater locomotives that I've talked about before. And with that, a special thank you to all my underwater train finders. Thomas Ward, Some Dude 267 Orange Glass, Royal Hudson 2860, Lord Hoth 444, Benjamin Owens, Panzer Kitson 131-232, Mr. Black Rose, Josh Johnson, Metal for Life Guy, Anzac A1, Arthur Roy, DM Tribal Typhoon, Tommy Rossini, Lord Captain Von Thrust III, Joshua Long, Alaric Jaspers, Brian, Jack Carson's Railroad Videos, Major Klutz, Hayden DeGro, Master of None, Crystal Morgan, Ohio Trucker 1, and Amtrak 2023 Productions. Till next time, this is Darkness, and I bid you all a fond farewell.